Okay, I am going to attempt to make some little <coughs> circuit boards that'll hold the, the Hall effect sensor on here. And this is the other lever that goes on the and it'll mount on to that little lever like that with a couple 440 screws and the hall effect will be mounted right there and the wire will come up and and be uh, attached and the wire will actually I'm going to cut a little groove underneath to come up and around and then attach so that's the plan anyway so the first thing to do is I, I made I don't know if you can see it in the printing here I printed on shiny paper out of a magazine but there's one two three four I got five of them here I, I laid out uh, basically it's just a little track over to three different holes there's three holes and then three different holes for so the first thing I need to do is take some steel wool and rub them down a little bit, kind of rough them up. Might be better. They're so small; it's hard to. Let's we'll try one first here. Succeed or not. I'm transferring it. Should almost have a little bit rougher. This is double odd, I think. Oh, it's too full. Alright, well, we're going to give that a try. The next thing you want to do is I use that. Get over the trash can, give her a couple squirts to rinse everything off, rinse all your fingerprints off. And then I give it a little bit of a douse of denatured alcohol. I did that over the trash can. So this one should be ready to go. Um, grab, a, grab a board here. This is just a, an old board. Lay it on that board. Alright, so now we gotta we have to cut one of these out. So I'll get a scissor. If somebody didn't steal it, my wife runs off with that every now and then, so sometimes it's not here. So take this and we'll just cut one out here. Oh, rats. A ruined one. Cut half of it off. I'm just going to cut along close to the line. Right. And then you want to put that on there. Line it up. folded to one edge underneath to try to hold it in place. Now, <clears throat> this is the stuff that I use. It's the 
lucky nail polish remover regular. I am going to use, I need something to measure out just a small amount. I don't like the squirter. Well, I'm just going to try it. About three or four drops is all it needs for this. And push it down. Push it down with my finger. And then kind of wait for it to dry as, as you're working it down. Don't rub. Push. Just push down on it. Wow. Not working. Yeah, it's not working. Uh, and I'm not sure why. For another good dose. No. Hmm. Either I didn't get this clean enough, or that paper isn't um, good enough to, or I didn't get it roughed up enough. With I'm gonna get some uh, rougher. I got some rougher steel wool here. I'm thinking that I didn't get it roughed up. I should have did this before I cut the little pieces out. Try to take the shine off of the the copper. I tried this with some other nail polish remover because I had watched on the net uh, and I bought the type that they <coughs> said to use and it didn't work. It didn't work at all. Then I tried this stuff and it worked. It worked right off. And that's the stuff that I used for my other boards that I made for my ignition. But, like I say, I think it's because I didn't have this roughed up enough. Alright. And I know that if you got fingerprints on it, I'm going to try just a little alcohol. Rinse it off with a little bit of alcohol. Actually, I think I could still use this one that I kind of cut the back off of it. The one, or the one side off of it. I'm going to try using it anyway. That side. Put that side. Oh, oh man, in this stuff. Fold that tab over. 
that's just going to lay on that. Just like that. When you do that, you can you can see right through the stuff. All I'm doing is pressing on it. What it does, it's supposed to melt the, uh, because uh, um, laser printers, laser jet printers, they are, they lay a layer, the black that, or the printing that they put down is plastic. And uh, what this does is it melts that plastic and then it attaches itself to the copper. It's supposed to. And you keep pressing this down until it dries. And then once it's dry, then we put it into a tub of water over here. And let it soak up some water to loosen up the paper. It's about dry. This stuff takes a long time to dry on this little tiny. I, I'm, I'm thinking it's dry. So we're gonna throw that in the tub of water and let it and let it soak. You know. And I'm just letting it soak. Let's see where it's at. I'll let it soak a while. And rub it a little bit to get the paper loosened up. Just warm water. Ah, here we go. We got a keeper. And I'll see if I can get a closer view of it. But that is what it looks like. It ain't much to it. It'll be little holes poked in, in it. And uh, three holes there and then three holes there and the wires go in. So now it'll go in an acid bath. Um, it is, I have it over here and I see part of the, part of the magazine actually stuck to it too, down here. So we got a, we got a really nice one here. I mean, this. There's no flaws in it at all. And when we put it in the acid bath, the only thing that'll be left will be that where the black is, where the black on the... So, so we got one, and I'm gonna take and get the acid bath out. Another little Tupperware. There's nothing in it right now. Tupperware here. I'll stick, 
set that over to the side here. And uh, this, this, this is the acid etch, etch uh, that I made up, and I can't remember what's all in it. Not, it's not really um, hard to make. I guess I sh didn't need to dump all that in there, you dummy. I could have just dumped a little bit in there, but that's okay. And then we'll drop that in there, and we'll let it set in 15, 20 minutes, and pull it out, and it'll be ready to go. So let's try another one. All right. The secret is getting that copper roughed up, you know, and I, I kind of figured that I didn't have it, you know, roughed up enough. I only need two of them. I got three more tries left. cut out uh, four boards here, I think. Yep, two more over here, laying over here. This will make it so that uh, if I burn out a Hall Effect, all I need to do is unsolder it, solder another one in, and it's ready to go. alcohol over here. All I'm doing is just giving a little bit of a rinse. I was using that uh, degreaser and that seemed to work pretty good too, but it just takes a lot longer to dry than the alcohol. The alcohol dries right away. All right, and we'll take and cut another one out here. I'm kind of surprised that part of the magazine stuck on that one too. Normally it doesn't do that. All right, so there it is. Take and center this on there. And fold. This time I got a tab on both sides here. Fold that under. Fold that under. And try to lay it down. Should have some tape out here. See if I can get it centered again. Right there. Right there. I think I got it. Give this. Uh, and this is only like three or four drops. Push her down. And once it's stuck, and I just pick it up here and I'm just pinching it between my fingers here.
wait for it to dry. Tweezers at here to see what this one's looking like. It takes a while in this etching if it's cold, and it's cold out here. The warmer it is, the faster it goes. And when it's cold like this, well, it isn't, it isn't that as acidic that it hurts your fingers. Yeah, I can see it start, the copper just starting to turn a different color. I don't want to get that on the... I don't want to get that on the one I'm working on here. It does burn in if you've got little cuts, so it doesn't feel so good. Yeah, I, have to, I got a high speed, uh, little tiny, or a little high speed drill press that I've got that I'll poke the holes with. And like I say, it'll be mounted with uh, 440 screws. Okay, I soldered one of the little boards together right here. I want to make sure I don't short it out here because I got it hooked up to uh ignition board. But let's see if I can get it to focus on that. Focus on that right there. Focus on that. There we go. So basically it's there and then the wires go through the board and solder in and the little chip is right off in the corner there. So that'll mount on to the that'll mount on to that just like that. So so I should be in business. It'll be, this will be facing to the front like that. The wires will go up to the front of the motor. Whether I put it that way or that way, it won't matter. And when they came out of the solution, this is what they look like before I drill them and, and everything. Just uh couple little copper trails on there. I don't know if the camera's focusing. I got it up in the air, so. So I need to drill the holes in this one and then solder it up like this one. Uh, I put hooked it up to this board over here just to test it to make sure that it was working. It's hooked up. I don't have a coil hooked up, but the LED will 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 light up. So it's obviously working. So I will go and drill uh, the other board up and put a chip in it and put some wires on it. Okay so here's what it looks like. And I put a little bar across there, pinch the wires and uh, it should uh, mount on. This is outside of the scope of the, the, the disc. It'll be up here like, like that. So this isn't going to interfere with anything. So what I'm going to do, I need to do, what I do need to do though is make a washer yet for it because I didn't I didn't put a big enough step on this. I should have had a bigger step on on uh, my disc here. So, so I'll have to make a washer. To... Well, actually not, unless this one's backwards, because they will fire on that uh, Hall Effect if they're really close and.
Yeah, see, I think this one, I think this one here is actually backwards, the magnet. Let's try this one. This one here fires right there. Ah, so it's not too bad. I, how you can tell the dwell, how you can figure out the dwell, real simple. Uh, a simple way is to uh, turn it, turn your magnet counterclockwise and note where it fires. Okay, so the magnet's positioned right there. Now go on the other side and turn it the other way. And your magnet's right there. So from there to there, so it's it's about, looks like about maybe 10, 15 degrees. So that won't be so bad. But I do have to make a washer for on the back side because I don't want it running that close. So I need to make, looks like about, uh, about 200 thou spacer in the back to move this out. That should work. Now the wires will come out here and they'll just loop around. I'll put I'll put a heat shrink around them and they'll loop around and they'll go into a box. I'm going to make a little tiny a little box. It looks like a, a Model T coil. That's the plan anyway. And I'm going to set that right here in front. If I have room right here, it'd be just a real small block. And basically, it'll just be thinking maybe even just to block a little cube of wood and then hollow it out, put the wires in, and then the wires will go down through the base and into the bottom. And then the spark plug wire will come out of that box and come up to the spark plug. So it'll look like that is the coil box. And the spark saver on the other side will come in from the other side and go into that box and go down below and then hook up actually hook up to this <coughs> to uh, this so it'll only fire it'll only fire when the coil or when the valve is closed so <coughs> on a exhaust stroke or it won't fire so I can get the other one set up the same way here I don't know if you're seeing. The, oh yeah, you're, getting them, you're not even seeing the light. So, I don't know if that shows up on the camera. Even I don't see it. Let's zoom in on that area right there. There's the light. Oh yeah, you can, just, you can see it blinking right there so anyway enough dinking around I've got this one pretty much this ignition system done except for the washer underneath I'm gonna go ahead and make the other one right away and uh, because I might have to make well I'm sure I'll have to make a washer for the other one too and what the washer is gonna do the washer is gonna the washer is gonna go in between and hold this uh, um, adjuster spark adjuster in in so that it can't slide out and get any closer so and then after that after after I get that done so after I get that done I'm going to probably probably work on spark plug next oh no 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 uh, once I get the other one with the disc on it and everything, uh, I'm going to work on a spark saver on the other side of the motor and uh, work on that so that I can get that sorted out and, and put together. I better disconnect my board here. I don't like leaving them hooked up if, and uh, I, I got to figure out where to put, a, where I'm going to put a switch on that too. So to turn it on, turn the motor on and off. But I think that's going to work pretty good, though. And oh, well, I got the carburetor to make. Um, and then the exhaust, the exhaust. Uh, I want to put. 
I want to put a uh, bent tube down there and I'm debating on well I'll have to make a an aluminum uh, little flange to squish to uh, squish <laughs> to press in into uh, the exhaust port and I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to attach the uh, I should just make I don't know if I have any uh, aluminum tube I should just turn up a tube that'll fit in there and then bend it I might do that um, or I could make a 45 joint there's a lot of ways I could do it I guess Hmm. Well, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do what I've done uh, to the other one. Same thing. And uh, I'll be in business here. Um, yeah, bench looks like a mess again. But if I burn out a hall sensor under, all I need to do is un unscrew the, it, the unit from there. Solder it a uh, new... Uh, uh, all effect sensor and I do have a uh, bag of them so uh, like I say I found a cheap spot to order them they're from China but they seem to work they seem to work all right I've got them in my uh, um, mini hog and they and they're in, in a they're in an oily environment in, in that thing, and they seem to work just fine. Which, it looks like I'm not going to get back to that until next fall, so that's just going to sit. Unless I find room to find time this summer if it's raining or something to work on that. Because I want to get these, I want to get these close to done if not done. I, I, I'm hoping to get them done before the weather gets nice and gardening starts. <laughs> I see the camera. Is focus was focusing on my beard. <laughs> well, that's weird. Now it's focusing on my eyes. So. The new camera, uh, it works pretty good to an extent, but for close-up video, I still like my little you know, GoPro knockoff for handling, you know, up-close shots. I, I put it on uh, this little tripod. It's just a little mini tripod, and, and I can get some close-up video of that. Uh, when I do a close-up videos, it's, it seems to uh, focus and work really well. And further away, it seems like it, I don't know, it might be not enough light in here or something, but it doesn't want to focus as good. So I better quit gabbing and get going here, otherwise I ain't going to get anything done. Okay, I have the second one done here. With, uh, I, I gotta cut this off, this little strap that's going across. I just left it long. <clears throat> I'll just take a blade and, and cut it off. But if you watch the LED over here, one in the motor works. With the disc. And I don't have the disc and stuff on the other motor, just laying here to get the second one. And it works so they both work so now I can go ahead and put that disc the other disc on the other motor and call this motor one motor two and uh, and we'll be ready to go I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this and then I'm gonna cut this off carefully with a razor blade I'm just going to follow the, use the block as a guide. Just about got my finger. Never supposed to cut toward yourself. You're always supposed to cut away. <laughs> but sometimes you just gotta. You just have to cut toward yourself. <laughs> I just want to make sure that it's still working after all that jerking it around and everything. Yanked on it pretty good. Put the magnet up back on my. Yep. Working fine. Um, so now, 
we get number two. I got that one on the surface plate over here. And we'll see if we can sneak in here. And I want you to focus on that right there. Sometimes you got to tell it what to focus on. I don't know. It's, I'm not up on this camera yet, so I got to disconnect it over here from the board. Disconnect my wires. Okay. And wires are going to go that way. This is going to go on here like that. Snug, 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 snug. It's supposed to be snug, though. There we go. And then this will tighten it up. Yep, that's working. Oh, I know. Something I'm forgetting here. I need to get a washer behind this yet. About. <clears throat> I need to make washer. Oh. Uh, Looks like maybe, let me get a scale, 150. I'm guessing 150. I'm going to grab a scale here and the only reason I want a washer in behind this is to go so that this can't slide off. I, maybe I'm worried about nothing, but but you know it. If it's has an opportunity to slide off you know it will <laughs> so if I go 150 it's that far away I'm gonna start with 150 150 uh, washer to fit on there same diameter as this is this back backing plate so, so and then uh, once I do that then we'll flip around to the other side over on the other side and put the start spark saver Work, work on the bracket for it. So that's where I'm at. Got both brackets done for the uh, variable ignition, basically. So, and it should work. So I've used this uh, concept before and it works. So, so when I uh, get the bushings made and it together, then we'll work on the other side, so now I'll be back.